Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Personas, and in this video, we're gonna mix a vocal using stock plugins. Now I have a confession. I have a Presonus t-shirt on and I'm incredibly biased. I think the stock plugins in Studio One sound great. I have another confession. Whatever software you use, if it's not Studio One, the stock plugins sound great. You can get great sounding mixes using the plugins that come with your software. That's what I mean by stock plugins. While the fancier emulations of great analog hardware are fantastic and I love them, if you locked me in a room and just gave me a standard EQ and a standard compressor, I could still get the job done, and so could you. So, we're gonna use uh, this, a song called Listen, it's a song of mine, that um, I used in the last video, and I figured let's use the vocal here. So I've removed all plugins, so we've got a finished mix, except the vocal, the vocal does not have any plugins on there. So let me give you just a little uh, listen to the intro and the raw vocal as it stands right now. Mothers would be proud We say what's on our mind No matter who we tear down Okay, so a couple of things. I've noticed this more and more as I teach mixing. People will say, oh, but the track already sounds so good. That's a big takeaway. If you're working with tracks that don't already sound good, then you're going to be doing a lot of fixing rather than a lot of mixing. Trademark. Just kidding. Um, there, are, there are situations where you have to fix things in the mix, but the more that you can pull back in time and really focus on making the recording itself sound good by choosing, you know, having a decent sounding room, choosing a good mic, and, and recording it well, the mixing process becomes easier. Now, I have to be completely honest. This was one of my EPs that I recorded at a friend's studio, and we used a $6,000 microphone on my vocal. That said, I like the way it sounds. It's big and beefy and awesome. I also like this mic, which is like $300. Or I've even, you know, our new USB mic from Personas. It's under 200 bucks, and it sounds good. So I'm kind of contradicting myself. But make sure you record a good-sounding audio. If it sounds beefy and weird or thin and roomy and the, just the raw recording, then you're going to not be able to fix a lot of that in the mix. So make sure you get a good-sounding recording first. Okay, so here is the vocal. I'm going to do most of this with the vocal, vocal soloed. That's hard to say. And isolated, uh, just because I think it's a little bit easier to do. So let's listen. Let's decide what the vocal needs. Look how far we've come. So it's big and warm. If this was just a voiceover, I wouldn't want to mess with it almost at all, right? Because it's got that big, this is CNN kind of sound to it. But I don't know if I can say that on a video. We'll just let it, just don't tell. Um, but for this, if you listen to it with everything else, the vocal is kind of muffled and muddy. Look how far we've come. Kind of is like a woo, 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 woo. so. Let's do this. Let's add. <laughs> My general rule of thumb is I like to, if it needs some work from a uh, tone standpoint, I like to add EQ first. If I love the way it sounds for the most part, then I'll add compression first. So for this instance, I'm gonna go EQ first. I think it is a little bit on the muddier side then we can add the compressor seconds. So I'll go ahead and put that there. I'm gonna bypass it for now. So we're just, we're just dealing with the EQ, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me, so let's first just do a high pass filter to thin things out a little bit. Look how far we've come. Our mothers would be proud. We say what- One thing to keep in mind is in, in the 21st century, vocals in most kind of, especially if you're listening to like top 40 uh, pop records, even country, like the, the vocal is very forward and is very bright. Um, there's not a lot of big, fat, warm vocals out there. Um, and that's great. They still sound good, but there's, a, there's this balance between I don't want to get rid of all the warmth. Like I don't want to pull this number on the vocal. Look how far we've come. 
Look how far we've come. But it's not. But I also don't want to be so far the other direction where the vocal's big and beefy and just muddies up everything like the guitars and the bass and the drums, which is what this is giving us right now. Look how far we've come. You hear that? That woo, 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 woo. It's just, it's just there. It's just natural. So this 80 hertz, uh, by the way, the new Pro EQ 2 that comes with version 5 has this uh, linear phase low cut. Uh, which is cool. So we have kind of assigned specific frequencies. So I can go at 80 hertz. Look how far we've come. Still has some warmth there, but some of that low end rumble that was down below 50 hertz is now gone. Um, I still think we need to probably take this uh, low frequency uh, knob here and pull that down a little bit more because I need it to be a little more on the thin sides. So here we go. Look how far we've come. Those frequencies right there, that's at about 160 hertz. Uh, I don't want to get rid of them entirely, but I need them to be a little more out of the way. So I'm going to push them down by like three or four decibels. Look how far we've come. That feels a lot better. That feels a little bit more natural. Doesn't have that exaggerated low end, okay? So let's keep listening for a second. Look how far we've come. Our mothers would be proud. Now, just from experience, I know that the mid range on a vocal, so this area here, kind of in the three to 800 range or so, centering around maybe 500, tends to kind of build up and kind of lose some of the clarity of the vocal. A lot of instruments do that. So, I can tell this vocal is probably going to cloud up the middle a little bit. So I'm going to take a fairly wide cut here and just bring down some of those mids. Um, so the vocal is a little crisper and doesn't have quite so much wah, 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 wah of, those frequency, of those frequencies. I just got, hang on, here we go. Look how far we've come. Our mothers would be proud. Very cool. So now it has, it, it, you can, it still sounds like me, it still sounds like the vocal, it still has some warmth in there. We've just balanced the warmth out so we have a little more brightness on top. Part of me wants to boost the top end a little bit, but I'm not sure I want to. Look how far we've come. I'm curious what the compressor will do. I'm gonna increase the makeup gain a little bit because we've taken away a lot of volume. Look how far we've come. Our mothers would be proud. Okay, that feels pretty good. I'm, I might end up wanting some more top end later, but let's see what the compressor does. Um, so generally for me, EQing on vocals is a lot of a subtractive game with maybe, maybe a boost up at like 8 or 10K if it needs it. Um, but I'm, I'm rarely doing much boosting on a vocal unless there's like a big problem there. So that's kind of one big takeaway here. Um, and by the way, this is an exhaust, this is not an exhaustive course on how to mix vocals. This is just a quick and dirty. This is how I would do it. All right. Compressor. Typically on things like vocals, I like to go pretty quick on the attack, something like 10 milliseconds, um, 40 or 50 milliseconds on the release, fairly quick for both, but pretty quick on the attack. Um, cause I don't want the vocal to be punchy. I want it to be kind of squished. That's the sound of like a modern vocal. Um, and so I will bring the threshold up between probably three or four to one. And then I'll bring the threshold down. So that was the ratio up to like, it's like, let's make it four to one. Great. Uh, and then I'll bring the threshold down until I'm getting a decent amount of compression happening. What I'm looking for here is just instead of a nice, clear, pristine vocal, I want it to sound, for lack of a better term, compression on a lead vocal has a, this, this sense of almost kind of strangling it, that's violent, of smushing it uh, to help it kind of sit. Um, it's just the sound of like a modern vocal. So that's kind of what I'm listening for here. Part of the way to get that is to make sure you've got a pretty fast attack time. All right, let's try it out. Look how far we've come. Our mothers would be proud. And also what I'm going for, so I'm a fairly dynamic singer, like that line, our mothers would be proud. The mother's part is really loud, and then the proud is almost whispering. I would like the whispering part 
to be louder and the mother's part to be quieter. I could do that with automation, but compression makes that a lot easier. So I want, what that means is overall, I'm going to turn down those loud parts, right? And then I'm going to use the makeup gain on the compressor to turn everything back up, which means the loud parts are down, the quiet parts are up. So when people say compression turns loud things down and turns quiet things up, that's only halfway true. That's the end result a lot of times, but really all compression does is turn loud things down. Then you can turn everything up. Does that make sense? There's, it's seems like semantics, but that's technically what's happening here. So let's see, how much compression do we have happening? Look how far we've come. So I know I'm getting close when I can hear the Fs, like that word far. Listen to how the F goes from being, look how far we've come, to look how far we've come. Like it just, it comes out more. And that seems a little exaggerated here in solo, but when listen to a full mix, that's how you can understand what the vocalist is singing because the compressor accentuates those f sounds. Sometimes I just make the weirdest sounds in here. Uh, listen to that F again. Look how far. Now, one thing we've done is we've turned the vocal down. If we just look at the meters here, you can see the average level has gone from here around negative 18 to here around negative 24. So we need to make up some of that volume that we lost with compression. So we're comparing apples to apples. So I'm going to increase the, which is what I love about the stock compressor in Studio One, I can actually see the input and output volume. So I've essentially just matched them without even listening to it. But here's what we got. 3 dB of makeup gain. Should sound pretty good. Look how far we've come. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. Like if I was having to do a quick mix of this, that the artist is leaving, going home for a month and needs a mix to listen to on the drive home, this is what I would have done. Um, and th this sounds good to me. Like this isn't too far off from what I would do if I was sitting down for an hour to mix the vocals. Um, these are kind of the basics. Um, the compressor is happening. It's compressing on the loud part. And then listen to the last phrase of that line where I'm singing really quietly. You can see there's no compression happening. That's exactly what I want. Look how far we've come. The word come has no compression. Um, but the look how far has a lot of compression and we've balanced everything out. If we could see it visually on the waveform, you would see all of these blobs would be closer in size, if that makes sense. Uh, and that's it. Now, the last thing I love to do, and uh, if you've seen my videos on my template, my mixing template, one of the things I always have in there is a slapback delay, which is just the analog delay plugin set to something really quick. Uh, like this one's set to a 16th note, or it could just be set to, you know, 100 milliseconds or so, no repeats. And then I just send a little bit of the vocal to that. D depending on the style of music, it's something that I love. You can obviously do reverb, but here's the last thing I would do if I was doing a quick and dirty mix here. Slap back delay on the vocal, not too much, just enough to give it a little bit of space. Look how far we've come. Our mothers would be proud We say what's on the mind No matter who we tear down Ooh, I've got something to do and to me, that's it. That maybe when we get into the louder parts, we might see that it needs a de -esser. Um, But I've done many a mix using just these two plugins, a stock EQ, stock compressor. Sounds great. If you can't get there with those, then let's work on your recording and mixing skills some more. Keep practicing because you don't necessarily have to have a big fat channel with some analog hardware to get a good mix. Those are great. I love them. I use them all the time. But let's remember the basics. If you if you don't know how to use EQ and compression, now's a good time to kind of kind of uh, double down and learn how to use those tools because that's going to make you better at using whatever other plugins you use as well. Um, it's kind of a like a rite of passage. Can I get this to sound good with stock plugins? Oh, I can? Great. Now I can actually graduate to those fancier plugins, so to speak. All right, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. If you liked this, uh, hit, a, hit like, hit subscribe, do all those things. Uh, and also leave comments if you have questions or if you want to see more of something. I really do read those. Uh, and it really helped. Like this, I had the idea for this video from a comment on the last one or two videos. Somebody said, vocal mixing with stock plugins, please. And here you are, person. I forgot your name, but thank you. Uh, it was a good idea. And uh, I'm listening for more. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.